This conference will now be recorded. Thank you so very much, ma'am, for giving us opportunity. So, dear friends, this is actually an introduction of what we are going to learn in our journey of approximately one and a half month with regards to two important technologies. One is industry standard and other is Cisco specific uh, transformation of industry standard. Our first is going to be VXLAN, which is indeed an industry standard technology. The technology which is nowadays used for DCI, which stands for data center interconnect. In this particular technology, we are going to go into deep dive. I am just going to show you what all we are going to learn in VXLAN, virtual extensible local area network. These are the agendas which we will be covering up in our topic called VXLAN, where we have VXLAN topology. We will discuss about who formed this topology, how this topology looks like, what is the difference between underlay and overlay. Uh, we will be talking about various, understanding various overlay based data centers, the evolution of VXLAN, various terminologies. Let me tell you one thing. Once you understand the terminologies, because we are going to have certain new terminologies over here, you know, you will start getting yourself comfortable with VXLAN. For example, if I say VNID, if you can understand L2 VNI and L3 VNI, right, you will gain confidence. It is indeed true that during this particular, these particular sessions, you will ask plenty of questions, right? And those questions are, most of the questions will be related to understanding the terminologies, right? We are going to establish VXLAN. We are going to learn VXLAN as a comparative technology over and above IEEE 802.1Q standard called VLAN. Where VLAN provides us two raised to the power 12 bits of information IDs, VXLAN provides us two raised to the power 24 bits. You know what? This gives us approximately 16,777,216 IDs. So this becomes quite imperative for us to understand what is this VXLAN? Okay. We will be learning about VXLAN deployment modes. We are going to come across three deployment modes out of which we will be focusing our attention with regards to configuration where we have two labs available for MPVGP, EVPN deployment mode of VXLAN, which is now industry is using today. We will be understanding MPVGP EVPN control plane and distribution of host reachability, how it actually happens. Dear friends, ultimately, after each and every theory, it is always a lab, which is important. I'm going to give you a show of the lab. What exactly is our lab? Where we are going to do the lab? What is the topology and explanation? So, during this particular VXLAN, of course, we will be talking about the VXLAN topology, which is called clause architecture. We will be discussing about underlay and the underlay terminologies and we'll be comparing it with overlay and overlay terminologies. We will be talking about the different kinds of overlays. Number one, network overlay. Number two, host overlay and number three called hybrid overlay. We will be zooming each and every overlay and we'll be understanding it. And I would be requesting you to please pay a sincere focus on these overlays, host overlays especially and hybrid overlays because during our ACI discussions, it is this understanding will help you to understand how the network virtualization is configured in ACI. So overlay, different, different new terminologies, the tunneling we will be discussing about, 
and uh, the difference between 4096 and 16 million 776 approximately 17 million ids as generated by vxland and how do we use them how we make sure that these ids are mapped to these ids this is a very important learning in vxland well you know what vxland is an overlay as we have seen in our previous slides overlay means it is going to be a tunneling technology guys i will be spending my few more minutes on vxlan and then we'll be jumping over to aci uh, in case if you need more explanation in terms of say questions and answers to be addressed you can feel absolutely free there is no specific dedicated question and answer session or minutes but any moment point of time during my explanation you can ask questions because this is always live sessions it's not something that you will ask questions at the end or i am going to have a question list in advance which i'm going to address now that is the advantage of live session okay so would like of course terminologies we will be discussing about something which i would like to show you about to understand vxlan we will be undergoing the inside story of vxlan with the help of our tool called wireshark we will be capturing one wireshark um, output and we will be deciphering each and every component we'll see where exactly is vxlan why it is so early because we need to understand what are the contents what are the various fields involved in our vxlan so this is not just that will satisfy us this is why shark will force us to go into the vxlan frame format and what is the role of this particular field over here we will jump over to a detailed understanding of this particular field called vxlan we will be talking about which particular field and which particular bit in the vxlan header tells us yes we have a valid vxlan id indeed guys this takes time so we will be talking about vxlan control plane data plane and various overlay services we will be looking at into how the peer discovery happens the local learning the remote learning in case of vxlan okay i really have to go quick because these all need a thorough explanation i'm just going to show you okay so when it comes to vxlan deployment as i told you one two and three this is the deployment which our industry is using today the you can say this is the heart of vxlan deployment and for this deployment our prior understanding of mp bgp is yes required in case if you have never deployed multi-protocol bgp with address family evpn it is still okay but please make sure that you have the proper understanding of bgp up till your ccnp level in case it's still you don't have it then i will propose you one book which will be provided to you guys along with this course you can go through the book before coming over to this 48 number of slide not exactly 48 mp bgp will come later on head and replication i'm going to explain you will explain you what is flood and learn and including the configuration we will have a packet walk of a vxlan packet under flood and learn how the transformation encapsulation de-encapsulation of packet happens when it comes to a device called a vtap what is vtap we will be understanding this much prior okay uh, the arp request and the arp response how the transformation happens what is the purpose of this arp request how vxlan handles it this is pretty important we will be talking about and will give you a glimpse of you know vxlan flood and learn configuration will explain you the configurations to be done not from lab hands-on point of view because we are going to do the next level of 
flood and learn which is called mp bgp so but we'll explain you the configurations just as a at a primary level so that we should be comfortable but each and every configuration command thoroughly and deeply we will be understanding okay this reminds me of one more thing that uh, during this particular session of vxlan i will be taking a pause uh, well we'll be giving a small pause a day pause to vxlan so that we can decently understand another technology a supporting technology called multicast whether it is flood and learn deployment of vxlan or it is mp bgp evpn deployment of multicast uh, of vxlan we do need the help of multicast so we will be giving a one day pause to vxlan where we will go back and look at into the multicast i will present you what all top uh, points we need to discuss in multicast otherwise it will be difficult for us to do the configuration on vxlan okay so something very important about vxlan is mp bgp evpn this is the core of our vxlan these days we need to learn about it and for this uh, i'm sure going to show you what different materials and in the material you will have bgp uh, pdf available as well which you can go through to refresh your knowledge of bgp if you feel like okay uh, 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 what else i want to show you i want to show you something which is very important wherein we will be taking a deep dive into a vxlan packet right inside okay we will be talking about something very important in called in B, mp bgp deployment called route types what are the different route types and so sorry you know if i'm becoming technical in a single day i really don't want to go to that deep technical in a single day because that is too much i'm just giving you a glimpse so when it comes to after this i'm going to stop right okay we require to understand and to learn the output of our configuration that is how the information flow inside the vxlan fabric information which are originally originated from the endpoints and go on to one device and to another device and then propagated in the entire ac uh, vxlan fabric aci fabric vxlan fabric ucs fabric blah 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 there are so many fabrics but right now it is vxlan fabric so we'll be telling you the importance of various components with regards to an output of a command show bgp l2 vpn evpn very very important in order to decipher our understanding of the vxlan not only that we need to understand we need to understand the network layer reachability bit count size of this information that it is 216 bits over here bits of information over here but when we change to some other command then the bit count size goes to 272 so this kind of understanding also that we need to establish okay so one more thing after completing this there are a couple of more it's just not 106 slides there are a couple of more information which need to be discussed along with it after this you know we will be jump once we are thorough about our vxlan understanding understanding in terms of uh, theory then we will jump over to the lab let me show you the vxlan not this one not this one this is the second lab we have got our very first lab on vxlan and uh, that is our yeah this lab 
This is the lab which is available with our friend Cisco in a portal called dcloud with the name of implement MPBGP EVPN PXLAN control plane lab version 2. With this particular topology wherein we are going to have two spine four leaf and three servers and one server third number server is outside the VXLAN fabric connected to a legacy router we will make sure that this server can also communicate with the servers inside the VXLAN fabric. So we will be taking a deep dive into this with regards to, okay, uh, this workbook will be provided to you, which has thorough details and how to log in with certain caveats and advices. And this lab will be spread across six different tasks starting from zero all together seven different tasks task number zero which says pre configurations and check if you want to perform this particular task which is nothing but which is configuring your vxlan starting from the scratch in terms of providing ip addresses to the devices configuring the routing protocol ospf configuring the MTU on the interfaces, configuring multicast as well. Everything from the scratch, if you wish to do, that is also possible by scratching out all the configurations. There is a way I'll tell you how you can wipe out all the configuration and can start from the beginning. Else, the lab will be pre-configured in terms of IP addresses, in terms of routing protocol, which routing protocol, OSPF, and the interfaces along with mtu configured on it so in case if you wish to do the lab from the scratch would truly appreciate you in case if you want to just check the pre-configuration will definitely admire you for that as well so well guys this is about the vxlan what we are going to cover high level understanding of i can say you know thirty thousand feet understanding of what we are going to learn in vxlan i have given you then what resources with regards to vxlan will be provided to you once you enroll for this particular course as you know that we are all under a banner called stringnet stringnet provides you the login access once you enroll as a student and you would be requested to sign up once you sign up with your details, your credentials, which will be all together with you, you will be asked to log in into the account. Your account will be activated, and under your profile, you will get to see, you know, depending upon what courses you have enrolled for, where we have different courses like ACI, VXLAN, Hyperflux, Nexus, SAM, SD Access, UCS ccna data center ccnp data center and various so many things so this particular course called vxlan will be assigned to your respective account wherein you guys will get all the class recordings right means you will have the classes in advance in your hand once you join on day zero itself if you wish to along with all the labs you can see that the labs uh, one single lab having six different seven different tasks will be spread across to multiple days where in each and every configuration with regards to task four task five task six individual tasks will be explained so lab in itself is going to take each video is of one day one day means one class uh, one um, four and seven so approximately one week we will be dedicating on just the lab okay so you will be having access to all the class recordings and the workbook of what so two different labs both the labs are similar there is a difference lab number two is advanced lab on top of lab number zero where in for the VXLAN configuration, you will have opportunity to configure multi-tenant as well as VPC. 
So we have VPC with VXLAN. We have multi-tenant configuration in VXLAN. So lab number two is little advanced on top of it. Okay. Then besides these uh, two labs, you will be provided with beautiful study material. For example, BGP guide and the lab workbook and study material. They are all downloadable. Videos are available just online. So when it comes to study material, you have VXLAN building data center with VXLAN, BGP, VXLAN troubleshooting, multicast, PIM lab, PIM understanding, modern open and scalable fabric, VXLAN eVPN, VXLAN eVPN, and VPN, VXLAN design consideration guide. So instead of searching for the books, PDF, etc., you will have access to all of them. And last but not the least, any point of time with regards to your complaint, there is a feedback tab with your individual login, which will be provided to you. Stringnet and the coordinator will humbly request you to provide your feedback of each and every class. Right. OK, so this is about the VXLAN guys now on to you if you have a question on that on this so ashish basically uh, traditionally like when we were using cisco switches we were using otv to interconnect between dcs right so initial days like a uh, few years back like uh, eight nine years maybe more than that so what problem is vxlan is a open standard so, but uh, it, it it is uh, basically in uh, generally i had done labs also on vxlan so basically the thing is uh, from a vendor perspective like uh, it is just a dci concept right like uh, uh, we see vxlan is a protocol that uh, basically is used to establish a tunnel between the dcs to uh, establish a communication uh, across them and that is uh, without license instead of in if for what you have to pay for license right so that is what is it is all about right Yes, VXLAN okay. is, yeah, as you rightly said, VXLAN is not a Cisco proprietary, it is industry standard protocol. So, which mm -hmm. means on all the routers, all other vendor routers, VXLAN functionality is available. Okay. Number one, the disadvantage of OTV, OTV was not able to provide you inter VLAN communication, it was okay. an overlay for intra vlan communication across different data centers okay point number one number okay. third difference is otv is, was not capable of providing you multi-tenancy concept what is this multi-tenancy when you have multiple customers and you want those customer traffic to be handled to be entertained it was okay. with regards to the same tenant same customer whose data centers are spread across but vxlan provides you a multi-tenancy and inter vlan communication and of course okay. second third fourth important thing is it provides you not only layer two communication it provides you layer three communication as well okay so that is the reason we go for vxlan because uh for uh, when i consider like uh, in this environment i always uh, got i mean like uh, if you look at aci right the co the complexity involves in handling this vxlan stuff is very high and the troubleshooting also makes it hectic to manage basically <laughs> uh, it, the learning curve mm -hmm. is also very very steep and uh, yeah so that is the reason i just asked yeah thank you so much yeah you are welcome arjun Okay, dear friends, there is a message and a request from our coordinator, Ryan, kindly share your contact details, WhatsApp, email, message for the further communication. So you can just mention your details on this chat itself. All right. Okay, so guys, before we switch over to the ACI, what is there in ACI learning? Because this is a combo, right? So. Let me know if you have any question, queries, doubts, complaints, 
anything. Uh, so actually, batch. timings, yeah. timings of this batch, may know the timings. Yeah, timings will be uh, evening seven thirty p.m. IST Monday to Friday. Seven thirty to nine thirty. Uh, well, in case if a lab is going on, then lab stretches normally to one and a half hour plus sometimes. Okay. When it comes to theory, I don't prefer covering, uh, giving more than one hour to the theory. So okay. maximum one and a half hour. Uh, maximum means maximum has no limit. Okay. What is the duration of the course? Like two months? Like what is the duration? Well, VX LAN in itself will take approximately two weeks, right? Including okay. lab, right? And after VXN, we will jump over to ACI, which is a month long course. So altogether, the duration of complete combo pack course is one and a half month. OK, OK, thanks. You're welcome. Yes, Umair, this class recording, this is not a class, this is a discussion recording will be available and will be provided by our friend, Ryan, the coordinator. Please do share all, all of you guys. Please do share your email IDs and your mobile number, WhatsApp number. Okay, okay any other query with regards to AC, uh, VXLAN? Okay, so no worries. Uh, you can see on day three, we will be talking about multicast. We will be discussing about multicast for VXLAN, right? I have shown you over here. I have some separate slides for it. We can cover up that. Okay, now would like to take your attention to our next topic called ACI. It's not going to be a mandatory. If you just want to do VXLAN, you can just do VXLAN. If you want to do ACI, you can just do ACI. If you want to do both, you can do both depending upon your choice and your requirement. So this is going to be our ACI. Well, it is a long one month long course where not only we are going to talk about the theory part, one hour maximum every day for one week. We will be talking about, we will be spending more time approximately three to four weeks on our labs. So in ACI, we will be talking about certain new words. So these actually are my uh, class slides and just not the presentation slides. So we will be talking about network operations, a uh, typical network operation and what is network operation in ACI. So, but you will find, you know, a pinch of marketing over here. So I will say that I'm sorry. I my intention is not to market ACI. Well, I myself is the critical evaluator of ACI. Though ACI is my bread and butter, I am working on ACI day in day out. I do evaluate this solution of Cisco more critically and do keep on giving my feedbacks based on various versions. I have gone through version starting from version two up to version six in ACI, which I will be telling you later. So we will be talking about what is our traditional networking, how our traditional networking looks like. There is always a better way to think to do things better. And that is ACI from black and white to color legacy to modern. And what is ACI networking? how different devices are connected to you over here will be finding you know what a uh, similarity in the topology the topology which we do happen to see in vxlan the same topology of leaf and spine we will be working on in aci but the configuration will not be done based on box by box approach but with the help of controllers so we will not be touching guys promise to you guys once racking stacking cabling of these devices are done and of course power on of these devices are done then you need not touch any of this device sorry no no box 
by box approach in ACI. Instead, the entire ACI fabric, we will learn how to configure from our controller. Here, we are showing three controllers, but one single controller does suffice. The lab which we will be using in that lab, we are going to have three controllers. You can see that none of these devices, they are horizontally connected. But these controllers, when I'm saying none of these devices, it includes our spine switches also. And our controllers also, in case if they are not directly or horizontally connected to each other, how comes they are going to form the cluster? And this is going to be the question and will be addressed in our very first lab in ACI, where we will learn a systematic way or approach or the procedure where in these controllers will form one cluster. Pretty important, but definitely we should not jump over to the lab without having our thorough understanding of the hardware. What are various hardwares? Our spine switches, our leaf switches in ACI, their connectivity, their line cards, the spine switches, their interface speed, and of course, something called their connectivity to the servers. This diagram is very important. This diagram tells us that how our Tor leaf switches or server leaf switches can be connected. We have connectivity like this, where in our leaf switches can be connected to external devices, non ACI devices. They may be layer two or layer three. There may be certain virtual servers. This is nothing but this called for an integration between our ACI fabric and our other vendor fabric. For example, Microsoft to ACI integration, VMware to ACI integration, OpenStack to ACI integration, Red Hat to ACI integration. So many different kinds of integrations possibilities are there. We will be learning the basic integration between our ACI and VMware solution. So that is for that we need to learn the network virtualization. So we will be learning what are the different modes of our servers can be connected to our Tor switches. Okay. The deep dive concept, anatomical concept of our APIC cluster formation called what is sharding. We will be taking a look on one of the bill of material and what are the components of just one single device, one single server in our ACI fabric or our controller. So many components are there. Couple of components require our deep understanding. And what is this controller? How this controller looks like from front, from behind, more closer and more closer in terms of its interfaces and connectivity and more details of this particular and the protocol running in it and of course, again from the scratch to understand how these servers called controllers, they are connected to the ACI. Very close picture of their connectivity. And of course, in case if one of the controller goes faulty, how to make sure that a faulty controller configurations are fixed through a backdoor entry into these controllers called SIMC entries into the controller. Guys, <laughs> that will be part of our ACI. We will talk about what is Cisco Integrated Management Console to give us a backdoor entry to the controller to fix the faulty configuration in them and that too remotely. Okay, how the page looks like certain basic commands, the CLI commands, though it gives us a GUI, but these commands are important for our understanding. And how can we do the initial setup? Pretty important. 
that is we are going to learn this particular course from the scratch in terms of understanding the hardware in terms of understanding its interfaces in terms of setting up it to go for it guys intention is just not to cover the operation part of con uh, our aci fabric but to cover the basic so that once you have the operations of aci you should be comfortable in case if you get opportunity to design and implement you should be comfortable intention is you should be comfortable to prepare the hld that is high level design ld low level design network implementation plan and operations handover document as well so this much of the knowledge is important and this is what we are going to cover in aci so this is just not implementation or operations this is the deep understanding of aci will help you to design aci as well and this what i have ever i'm telling you is something i am practicing on my daily basis as well a uh, <clears throat> couple of caution commands which you should not do we'll be talking about the uh, communication blah 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 guys there is so much i would love i would want you guys to interrupt me in between i'm so sorry to say no one has interrupted in between just don't think it is just a uh, monologue which is going on so guys i am going to pause myself in between for you guys to have you know a free room to <clears throat> yeah ashish i have a question are you covering this l2 out l3 out and uh, dci concepts in aci like uh, how we are interconnecting to dcs and uh, okay. the specific vpc vpc setup usually it's not a traditional vpc concept right so sa is a policy based model are you covering like uh, those stuff very good question and this has popped me up to say goodbye to my theory slides so that i can show you uh, just a second what all we are going to cover uh and uh, okay one second i am all right okay answering your question needs me to jump to the labs what labs we are going to cover okay i hope uh, i'm so sorry uh, it's 281 slides just for the lab and uh, which says we are going to cover this much uh let me let me mark over here yeah so answering your question we will begin our lab journey right with bare metal host lab bare okay. metal host right then vmm integration where we will learn the network virtualization and how aci does handshaking with the vmware vcenter server right uh, well these two labs which are available but not available in version 5.0 we will be skipping these two labs as these two labs which are on asav why because the tab is being re removed and these two labs will be replaced by another lab called policy based redirect lab today cisco wants that we should configure pbr instead of you know virtual asav or virtual uh, appliances as you rightly asked we are going to talk about vpc and the vpc labs will be covered under layer 3 out and under l3 out the topology which we will be working on besides a cherry on the top will be this particular lab layer 3 out transit routing the purpose of this lab is to understand what is the significance of configuring bgp route reflector 
right and one concept which we are going to look at into which i will just bypass to explain you guys which is nothing but called what is the meaning of export route control subnet and meaning of external subnet for external epg for understanding the two checks and the configuration of route reflector what is the impact of configuring the route reflector in bgp we will be doing this lab and under transit under entertainment lab we will be talking about the communication between when we have two different separate tenants how the vrf route leaking we can do in order to make sure the endpoints in the two different tenants they can talk to each other there is another beautiful lab on dhcp relay agent which will help us to understand how one dhcp client can fetch a dynamic ip address from a dhcp server residing in a different tenant as well and of course then layer two out deployment with extended bridge domain we will be talking about now arjun coming back to your question that is dci yeah right where we have two different aci fabrics this is nothing but it is a multi site right right before multi site there is another aci deployment called multi pod deployment wherein two separate geographical rooms but we want a single fabric well that is not part of this agenda that is part of an advanced aci agenda in case if you wish to please drop your comment on this we'll see the majority of the guys who are interested in doing aci multi pod and multi site aci multi pod lab unfortunately i do not have it's not available but the explanation deep dive explanation of the lab and explanation of the configuration is available with me on request basis and uh, based on who how many guys are interested in can cover multi pod as well multi site lab is available with thorough explanation and you can do hands on to that lab that is also there but okay. when it comes to ipn or isn device configuration ipn for interpod network and isn intersite network device configuration those are not available so honestly i believe i do not have complete end to end configuration lab available so i discourage myself from covering what i do not have in thorough details okay but no still problem. i just thank you yeah thanks are so you i welcome? think multi site should be fine yeah that should be fine yeah okay good arjun and uh, well would appreciate more questions also endpoint uh, learning wise have you like uh, because that is the where the issues happen commonly endpoint learning beautiful 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 and let me show you that as well that's a wonderful questions you are asking and uh, you know i am prepared for those questions but i thought to avoid that will be advanced study you know there are a couple of things which will come as on request basis okay okay uh more learning okay let me come over to that uh 510 slides covers you know still doesn't cover 100% of aci let me tell yeah. you yeah <laughs> i do have you can see i have 510 slides just on theory and uh, more than 200 slides on the lab but still i feel they are still not sufficient this is what looks like a half half a million uh, cost right the for aci includes <laughs> half a million okay. dollars yeah <laughs> absolutely now let me tell you about your question the endpoint learning in aci yes 
as on request basis i do cover this when a special request from dear friends like you arjun comes and for that we require cli access we need to know we need to have a good hands on and learning on the cli commands for that we need to know what are the two different chips broadcom and northstar chips what do they actually do we need to learn and understand what are the two different kinds of tables which they do prepare called local station table and global station table in order to learn the endpoint learning how it happens we need to know the how the mac addresses are learned we need to learn how to go inside the line card v shell of the line card and run certain hidden commands show system internal eltmc info vlan brief in that case on your request basis i will cover what are the different kinds of vlan ids right hardware vlan id access encapsulation access encapsulation vlan ids fabric encapsulation vlan ids bridge domain vlan ids not only that will suffice to the greed of knowledge that is from our the line card access we will go to the chip level access bcm stand for broadcom shell of the chip we will go into and we will take a look to understand the mac address the endpoint mac address right and the corresponding vlan i will explain you this with regards to when we have two endpoints connected to the same leaf switch which is quite a simple basic under uh, basic requirement is to learn what learnings are done by the line card what learnings are done by the asic in the line card what are different different kinds of vlans ids learned and their purposes and where actually they are learned and then we will be going to the next explanation where in we can learn the endpoint learning of different virtual machines connected to different leaf switches which again requires a deep dive knowledge of various commands starting from understanding the mac address of one with the holistic object is to know how one leaf switch learns a remote endpoints mac address or ip address We clean it again we need to go to the line card to perform certain commands the local station table learning the global station table learnings what different learnings are there and the pointer values now so a specific pointer value pointing to the default gateway to understand where exactly our endpoint is line so i will be explaining you the learning of an endpoint with the help of destination leaf switch so this i will also explain on request basis i'm equipped to explain you but the request just like you made should come from you guys yeah thank you ashish that should be fine and uh, another concept for l3 like service insertion right that uh, l4 to l7 services wait i want to integrate a firewall or a lb are you covering something on that okay i was telling you that only uh, one second okay uh, service insertion let me go to the labs where i said where i spoke about uh let me let me go to that lab it comes after vmm 
Okay. I am equipped to tell you the service insertion with the help of L4 to L7 services tab, but the limitation is right now. With regards to oh, where is my pen? Why my pen is not coming up? Seems my uh, how comes should not happen. All right, seems my screen is stuck, Mr. Screen. Huh? You never did like that. How comes you are stuck? Okay, anyway, if it is stuck, probably it's not going to allow me to write as well. But by the way, guys, can you hear me? I don't know what has happened. Yeah, we can hear you. You can hear me. But Your audio is dropping. I am so sorry, guys. I really do not know. Never ever happened, but I was stuck. Please confirm me back that you can listen to my voice and can watch my screen. Yes. All right. I am so surprised. Never ever it has happened that uh, my screen stuck like this all right so before you know finally we end not now requesting all of you guys to please do share your mail id so that uh, our coordinator ryan can contact you please do that if you can share your mobile numbers that would be great as well the message will be sent to you on your mobiles as well today mobile is more active than emails so please do share your mobile whatsapp number and your mail ids all right, so where were we? Um, Arjun, there was a question from you, Ryan, about the insertion, service insertion. And yeah. uh, let me show you. So I just wanted to tell you that uh, with regards to ACI, APIC version 5.x, any version, L4 to L7 services tab is removed by Cisco. So the lab which I was discussing with you called ASAV, routed mode and transparent mode needs our L4 to L7 service insertion tab, which is being removed by Cisco. And as per my understanding, it is being replaced by policy based redirect. So that lab I will cover with you, not okay. the ASAV L4 to L7 service insertion. But if you say, if you ask me along with 
your friends over there in the batch it will become obligatory on my part to cover that as well lab version 4.x is available to demonstrate you so we have got two labs two different labs version 5.x and version 5.4.x l4 to l7 service insertion lab is available over there so if you wish to you can but if you are working in a production environment i am sure you will not be having a version lower than 5.2 yeah right because cisco is requesting all his customers to move to version 5.2 which is uh, i would not say it's a bug free version but it is this version has removed a lot many bugs in the previous versions okay yeah thanks ashish no problem so uh, i mean just one question like if i want just to learn aci like uh, when is the batch starting for that well uh, two weeks after monday okay so because okay. vx land will take uh, two weeks time all right and then four weeks will be dedicated to aci so you can join after that and in okay. case if you uh, join if you enroll yourself the access to the portal will be given where in quick question let me show you and the rack access is dedicated right like uh... oh good question another good question but uh, just a second let me come to you if you uh, well join enroll yourself prior to the date when we will start aci you will be provided access to cisco aci where you will have the recordings of all the classes theory as well as lab available with you which includes the service l4 to l7 service insertion labs as well so you will have access to it along with access to the multi site multi pod and multi side lab and the demonstration as well okay now then next question of yours so this uh, enrollment will be this access will be provided to you post your enrollment and about your lab yes the lab what we will give you they will be from cisco only cisco d cloud which is spread across uh, let me show you that which is available across uh one second uh, i'm logging into the left this lab okay about the lab because you ask the question instead of giving you a theory answer or theoretical answer only let me give you let me show you okay we do have in cisco d cloud thanks a lot to cisco we do have one two three four five different data centers where our labs will be available there is no crunch if you want lab 24 by 7 availability that can be provided to you there is no crunch in case if you have access to book the lab i will guide you how to book the lab you can do the lab for that you or your company needs to be cisco partner in case if you do not have then the access to book the lab yourself then i will book and i can share the lab with you based on your uh, cisco login mail id so you just need to share with me your cisco mail id wherein i will share the lab with you and you will get a mail from cisco that your lab is booked at your scheduled time uh, the lab will begin when the lab time begins post that it takes around 15 to 20 minutes for the lab to be available to you now 
with regards to this what lab for aci we will be using we have getting started with cisco aci version 5.2 not only this if you want to practice and take a look on the latest version latest updated which is not yet been introduced fully by cisco is version 6 you can take a look on version 6 lab as well so what i need to do is i just need to book the lab on any one of the data center and give the lab to you based on how long you want to practice it how to access the lab how to do the lab lab workbook etc with regards to it will be also provided to you this lab will provide you the vmm integration as well that is how to integrate your epic controller with your vcenter controller okay yeah like uh, duration of the lab like is there a specific duration that we need to come window that we need to complete it or something no there will be no specific duration if you have asked the lab for 10 hours you will get the lab for 10 hours if you feel okay. 10 hours are not sufficient the same lab needs to be extended before the lab ends you can extend the lab if you have the privilege else you can ask me to extend the lab and i will do it okay. but sometimes okay. the lab uh, gets stuck or hung or starts responding slow in that case we can book a fresh lab as well okay thanks but sometimes there are uh, you know uh, downtime period or maintenance period cisco may not provide you lab during the maintenance period okay got it thanks yeah welcome well any other question there is caller 01 there is caller 02 my dear friend caller friends can you please uh mention your name and one more time another one time more request guys those who have not shared your mail ids or your mobile whatsapp number please do that okay and uh Rizan. Shahid, Sharad, Sohail, Omer. All right. Well, by the way, uh, from Monday, we are starting our VXLAN. Those who are interested would request them to enroll. Uh, our coordinator, Ryan, will reach back to you. You can also get in touch with coordinator. You have already received mail and probably the ping on WhatsApp from the coordinator as well. If you have shared your mail ID, the coordinator will get back to you and will share complete details and i myself ashley sagal would like to sign off if you don't have any question but still available if you have any question or in case if you want to get in touch with me you can ask this is me and uh, this is what right and uh, you can get in touch with me as well if you want to have a conversation with me a personal conversation you can have all right thank you so much dear friend this is ashish sagal signing off for the day see you yeah thank you ashish have a nice weekend thank you, thank you arjun thank you all have a nice weekend enjoy your weekend with full charging bye bye take care see you bye bye everyone uh, thanks Ashish. Bye, bye. thanks a lot thanks. everyone for joining and spending your time giving your time thank you so very much bye bye okay.